What's up guys? Welcome to Straight From The Chest. My name is Justin Groth. Guys, I just want to thank you for giving me your listening ear. Thank you for giving me your time. I really, really appreciate it. Guys, let me tell you why I am probably the worst salesman ever and probably a really good one at that. I'm way too, first of all, I'm way too direct, way too black and white to be a salesman. I feel like a lot of salesmen are very, um, what would you call them? Snake-like, tell you what you want to hear. Uh, they read you and they read what you might be thinking and they, they, go, they go against that to try to persuade you or manipulate your thought process <clears throat> on whatever they're selling. And I am the exact opposite. I'm going to say, this is what it is. You either can afford it or you can't afford it. And <laughs> that's why I'm the worst. But I'm probably really good at being a salesman because whatever I am selling, it's something that I implement in my own life. And because of that, I embody it. And that delivers value. And you cannot put you can't, you can't persuade value. It either is there or it's not there. And so when you embody value, when you embody the value that you're trying to deliver, it just naturally comes across as something that that other person wants if they derive any kind of value from what you're selling. And so naturally it sells itself, right? But more often than not, when you get in these, when you, if you are a salesman and you try to persuade people, you're trying to persuade them on the instance that, you know, this is something that you need and this is something that is valuable to you. But if you don't really, if you're not really embodying that and, and you don't take that, you're not an actual, an actual, an actual depictment of whatever that thing can do because you don't utilize it in your own life, well then you're not a good, you're not a good example. <clears throat> and so you're naturally going to negotiate with this person because negotiation is a part of the process, right? It's a part of the selling process. When you go to buy a car, that ticket on the car is not the end all be all sale, right? You can negotiate that price. And so there's some wiggle room, but when you believe in a certain thing and you embody that thing, you don't need to negotiate. It is the price that it is. If you can afford it, you can afford it. If not, I understand. Look, not everybody is going to be able to afford a Lamborghini one day. Not everybody is going to be able to have the luxury of driving in a Rolls Royce, but that Lamborghini or that Rolls Royce, if anybody drove in it, that would benefit them. Anybody and everybody, if they drove in or drove a Lamborghini, it would make them better. And let me tell you why. This is going off topic a little bit, but I promise you I'll center back. If you get in the front seat of a Lamborghini and you get behind the wheel and you push on the gas pedal, even if you're not a fan of Lamborghinis, I can almost guarantee you that you're going to have a smile ear to ear on your face. Now, if that were to be something that you could take to the grocery store, even though it's crazy embarrassing to some degree because it's so exotic looking, that's going to instill some confidence in you. And it's confidence that kind of associates with the, the dominance hierarchy scale in life, you know, with how good you're essentially doing as a human being. You know, how much, what can you, what you can provide for, you know, as a human being. And that, that's, in, that's kind of instantiated in our, in our biological DNA through millions and millions of years of evolution. It's just something that's so old that it's, it's older than us living in trees. It's just that old. Like that, that, that dominance hierarchy scale is something that's been proven and it doesn't go away. Okay. You're going to feel more confident by driving that said Lamborghini or Rolls Royce or any other you know, expensive car you can put in the blank. You're going to feel more confident as a byproduct. You're going to emit a different energy to people 
That's going to translate into your communication. That's going to translate into relationships. You're going to be a more confident being because of this dominance hierarchy scale that you're now more at the top of because of the car that you're driving. Now, okay, that aside, we're not talking about necessarily the car and I'm not talking about necessarily the confidence factor. But as it equates to who you are with what you're selling or what you're trying to present to the public with what you are and who you are. If you're not a proponent and you don't, you don't actually take this belief structure seriously and you don't really, you don't really value what you are or value what you, what you're implementing in your life, then you're not going to be a good candidate to sell it to somebody else. Now, more often than not, you're going to become, you're going to get in these negotiations, so to speak, with people about who you are or what you can offer. And if this isn't something that you embody 1000%, then I promise you, you're going to negotiate and have somewhat of a debate on top of the negotiation with the other person involved because of your lacklusterness revolving around that particular thing that you're selling. And what, I don't know if you can catch on yet, but what I'm talking about you selling is what you were created to do, your signature, your purpose, your, 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 your ability, your talents. If you're not grounded in what those are and you don't think that you're that good, or you don't really have a, you don't really have a, a grip on what you do the best, then you're going to be in constant negotiations with people and with opportunities in life. Instead, if you, if you, with every part of your being, understand that what you were called to do, you do it well. There is zero negotiation in any case, in any instance, you, this is your product. You are this, you either can afford it or you can't afford it. You either believe in me or you don't believe in me, but I'm not wavering. I'm not going to discount myself because you don't believe I'm not going to discount myself because you can't see it. I'm not going to discount myself because you, you don't understand the value that's in me. You either, and this is like buying a car, you either can afford it or you can't afford it. But I'm going to tell you that everybody would benefit from driving that Lamborghini, even though not everybody can afford it. Everybody would benefit from driving a Porsche even once in life, although they might not be able to afford it. But that doesn't mean that you just just because you can't afford it doesn't mean that you don't believe in it. It's just something that you can work to, you can work on to, right? You can, you can work into being able to being able to drive a Lamborghini one day. And look, this is not about Lamborghinis or Ferraris or anything. This is about understanding your value, what you bring to the table, the table. What do you bring to the table? Is it negotiable or not? And I would argue that if it's negotiable, you're not really grounded in what you're great at because what God gave you isn't something that's wavering and it's not something that is just so, so it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be practiced and refined because that is facts. <laughs> Those things need to be refined and practiced. I mean, even if you have a talent like Michael Jordan, it doesn't mean he never practiced. He still practiced and he practiced his ass off. But when you understand what you're given, it doesn't mean you don't practice it, but it also means you do not negotiate against people that might not believe in you or might not see it for how you see it. Sooner or later they will. Because if you don't have the value displayed right now, 
the more you refine your practice, the more you, the more you are progressive in it, the more you, the more you are capable of, of, of evolving in it, they'll ultimately see that. And these people that you're negotiating with, these people could be family members, they could be friends. They could be they could be just relatives of yours. They could be people that you look up to, admire, appreciate their counsel, and they still might negotiate with you. They might try to say, "Look, man, I understand these are your dreams. I understand that this is what you think God gave you, but I just feel like it'd be more pragmatic to such, 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 right? Blank, blank, blank. And that, that's up to you whether you believe more in what they're selling than what you're selling. And if you believe in what they're selling or what they're trying to sell you, then you're going to dilute where you're actually great at. You're gonna, you're gonna undercut it, man. And it's never gonna come to fruition like it could. It's not about the other person. Sadly, it's not about the other person and what they think about you. It's not about the other person and what they think the direction is for you. And this could be your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your grandma, your grandpa, your best friend, whoever. The bottom line is they're not you. They don't know what gift you've been given. They can't fully comprehend that. And because of that, they're not going to see it the way you see it. And naturally as humans, they're going to want to, they're going to want to infiltrate whatever you're seeing life as and put their own measures on it and put their own, I give you their own metrics that they feel you should follow. But that's a test. And I don't know if you're going to pass that test or not. And maybe that's the reason why you listen to podcasts that are centered around self-improvement and personal development. Maybe that's what led you here. But there's no magic trick to this game, man. There's no, there's no, there's no certain one thing you can do. There's no book to follow. And there are multiple books to get good information from, but there's no really one tried and true method to follow other than believing in yourself. Even though that's so cliche and non-original, that's facts. You believe in yourself. You believe in your vision. You believe in what God has inculcated within you. And you go on that narrative and you don't negotiate with people that say different or otherwise. You don't negotiate. It is what it is. The price is the price. If they can't buy it from what they see it in you, with regards to what you embody, then they're not your customer. Period. Move on. That's the way life should be for you. You got a dream and a vision. People can't see what you're selling. You don't embody it enough for them. They're not your customer. Move on. Not everybody you're going to be able to please. Not everybody you're going to be able to sell. There's going to be people that listen to me. They don't think I know anything of what I'm talking about. And they're right. I don't know a lot of what I'm talking about, but I do know when I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's rephrase that. I know, I don't know a lot of things, right? I am very kind I'm, so, I'm, my girlfriend says this all the time. You're so smart. You're so smart. She's just, you know, I know, I know she's, I think she's placating me a little bit. I don't know. Maybe she's, maybe she's trying to tell me something. I don't know. Maybe, but I think that I'm selectively smart. I'm not smart. I'm a dumbass in a lot of equations, right? I'm, I just am. But there are certain things that I'm very intelligent on and there are certain things that you're very intelligent on but or intelligent with but at the same time you're going to have people that try to persuade you different 
and you're going to have people that try to negotiate with what you're selling because they don't quite believe it yet. And you just have to gather the gumption to be able to look at them in their eye and say, and I guess this product isn't for you. And you move on and you stop selling them. Because if they can't buy what you're just embodying and they're not your customer, that's fine. You move on and you gather your audience based on what people see value in you with, with what they're looking for. And it will form itself. The opportunities will form themselves. The right people will form in your direction, but you just have to keep going and you have to keep believing and you have to, you can't stop seeing your vision. That's important. Don't plan on selling everybody. Plan on being everything God created you to be and selling a few, but those few are quality and those few will propagate over time. Trust me or not. Remember, I don't know what I'm talking about. I only know what I believe and I only know what I live and I only know what I experience. And those are the things that I say on here. Take it how you will. Done.